What's going on everybody? Thanks for stopping by. The Galaxy Z Flip 3 has officially been out for less than a week and I've been using it since then. At first glance, it's an impressive phone with a lot to offer, but it hasn't been all smooth sailing. Let's dive in. Flip phones are trying to make a comeback with Samsung and Motorola launching their latest takes in recent years in the classic form factor. I'm old enough to remember a time when the Motorola Razr was the hottest phone on the market. This phone was everywhere and Motorola ended up selling over 50 million units of the Razr. Looking at this today, it looks ancient, but there's something comforting about coming back to this familiar form factor. I had one back in the day and it felt so futuristic back then. Let's talk about the price. The phone is listed at $999 and is available in cream, phantom, black, green, and lavender colors, with additional colors coming in the next few months. I really wanted a white one, but didn't want to wait five weeks for it. I went with the phantom black as it's the only one with matte glass on the front and back instead of a glossy finish. As a result, fingerprints really don't show up on the exterior of the phone, which is nice. Selling this at $999 puts this firmly in flagship territory, but that's before you factor in Samsung's usual ridiculous trade-ins and incentives offers. I mean, I traded in a used diaper I found on the street and got $300 off. No, but seriously, I'm not complaining. Samsung does this with all of their phones, and I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it's because of lack of confidence in their launches, or if it's just a proven way to get phone sales. Either way, it's a win for us. The Z Flip 3 has a 6.7 inch full HD 120Hz OLED screen when unfolded and is 4.2 inches when folded with a 1.9 inch outer screen for things like notifications and music controls. It has a Snapdragon 888 processor with 8GB of RAM and a smallish 3300mAh battery. It's got IPX8 water resistance but no dust resistance which we'll touch on later. It's got Gorilla Glass on the front and back of the phone and starts at 128GB of storage. The fingerprint sensor is built into the side of the phone on the power button, which I really like, but it's pretty hard to reach given how tall the phone is. You can also use face unlock on this phone, but it's not as secure. It supports wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, but the charging speeds are too slow. Fast charging speeds top out at 15 watts and wireless speeds max out at 10 watts. At this point, there's really no good reason to not include faster charging. Given the small battery size, faster charging speeds like 30 watts would have been huge. The dual stereo speakers sound really good and get really loud with a little distortion at high volumes, but I'm always a fan of dual speakers. Overall, the phone has a nice weight to it and feels really solid when it's closed. Okay, let's talk about the cameras. The Z Flip 3 comes with dual, wide, and ultra-wide 12 megapixel rear cameras and a 10 megapixel hole punch front camera. Pictures look good with the usual Samsung saturation and Samsung included about a thousand different shooting modes like night photos, pro photos, super slow motion, hyperlapse, and single take, which takes multiple different shots and video with a single press of a button. You can shoot it up to 4K60 and HDR10+, and slow-mo at 1080p up to 240 frames per second. I like the portrait mode, which adds a fake bokeh effect, but the cameras are good enough to get a good depth of field when you get close enough to your subject. Video looks good with good stabilization, though swapping between the wide and ultra wide lenses isn't smooth if done mid-shot. You can also take pictures and do video calls with the phone folded in half to kind of create a hands-free situation. I don't see myself really ever using this feature as I would probably just hold the phone, but if you want to lay in the grass and enjoy your video call and forget about your troubles, then you can. Overall, the cameras are good, but they are a downgrade when compared to the similarly priced S21 Ultra. So what's it like to actually use the phone? As a normal, unfolded phone, it's really good. The screen is gorgeous and the 120Hz refresh rate is buttery smooth. Apps fly on this phone and I've had no hiccups or freezes while using it. Samsung's Android Overlay One UI is so much better than the old TouchWiz that people don't even really mention it anymore. Just thinking about it makes me queasy. If I did have one complaint about One UI, it's that there are almost too many settings menus. You can get lost digging through menus trying to find what you're looking for. But day-to-day -day usage has been great. Alright, let me get this out of the way. This is a two-handed phone. You'll need both hands to open it securely and not drop it. The hinge is stiff and complete one-handed usage just doesn't seem possible. You really have to fight with it by pressing your thumb in between the screens to try and open it. And it's super slippery. This is probably the most slippery phone I've ever used. A case or a skin can fix that easily enough, but don't let it fall out of your pocket. When it's open, it feels like a normal phone and the hinge feels really solid and well built. It can be open at multiple angles and I really don't see this having any durability issues in the long run. The screen, on the other hand, could be an issue. It's made of a thin foldable glass with a new protective screen cover laid over the top and it almost feels like glass, but you can still tell it's plastic. The warning screen you see when setting up the phone for the first time still warns about not pressing your fingernails into it or any sharp objects like an S Pen as they can leave a permanent indentation. Unfortunately, you can feel and see the crease in the middle of the phone. Given its location, it's pretty much unavoidable, but after you've been using it for a while, it really doesn't stand out or bother you too much. Fingerprints do stand out here more than your typical glass screen. Now this phone is waterproof by way of an oleophobic coating on the interior components, but it's not rated for dust or really any fine particles like sand or dirt. 
That's fine, and most people probably won't be getting their phones very dirty, but it's something you should keep in mind. The front cover screen is cool, and now it's actually usable this time around. I found myself mostly using it to check the time or notifications when the phone was sitting next to me on my table, but it's nice for changing music tracks or checking alarm or the weather. I think there's six available widgets right now, but I'm sure Samsung could add some in the future. Battery life has been disappointing. It's a big phone with a small battery, so it's not entirely unexpected, but it's something you'll have to be willing to give up in order to get this unique form factor. I like the phone. It's enjoyable to use and feels like something special and different from the norm when you're using it, but it comes at a cost. To really boost the sales of this phone and try to make foldables more mainstream, Samsung is selling this at $999. That's still expensive to be sure, but it's the first foldable they've offered at this price point. The novelty of taking a really big phone and folding it down to half its size when it's not in use is really cool, but it still kind of feels just like that, a novelty. You're losing out on a larger battery, better cameras, a 1440p screen, faster charging, Samsung DeX, and overall durability. And those are just direct comparisons to the S21 Ultra, which comes in at a similar price point. Whether those items are worth the ability to fold your phone for better pocketability is up to you. This phone is definitely not for everyone, but it could be for some people. There's something about it that gets me thinking about the good days when the original Razer was the mainstream. And hey, maybe you can find a used diaper to trade in. Thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Let me know if you bought the Flip 3 or are going with something else. I hope you have a great day.